Lemuria was was you know a continent, and this was you know way beginning in the beginning of Earth's history. And I can't really give you an actual timeline, but I'm pretty sure it was you know way before even the major civilizations on other major civilizations on Earth that we are no more known came to be. So this was likely probably at least um, several hundred thousand years ago, if not a million years ago. I think an interest by the higher galactic councils to create societies on Earth that would enable um, uh, you know, extraterrestrial beings to have like a landing platform to integrate their concepts and to, to the Earth people, okay? So this is around the times of, of Earth's history where um, it was very common for, for Earth people to integrate and, and have contact with extraterrestrial beings that came to visit. So it was a common thing during that time. And it, it wasn't looked upon as, you know, oh, this is weird or, oh, you know, it was just like, oh, there's our, you know, brothers and sisters from the sky, they're coming to visit. Lemuria, I think, was created first because it, it is Mother God consciousness, the civilization that represents the divine feminine. It was a very Polynesia-like environment, okay? So, so we're talking about palm trees and, and beautiful beaches and more of a tropical environment uh, rather than the more temperate environment that Atlantis had. So Lemuria was created to be a training ground for Earth people to have, you know, to, to gain deep spiritual knowledge. A lot of us either visited Lemuria as extraterrestrial beings, those of us who are star seeds, okay, or we've had incarnations on Lemuria as as Earth people, but with you know star origins, okay, and that was very common um, during that time. I think the times of Atlantis and Lemuria was probably, other than this timeline that we're in right now, to have more integration of the higher higher level spiritual knowledge and also to have more of an integration of star seeds that were incarnating on Earth, okay? So that's why I think during certain civilizations um, in the past, we've had probably uh, numerically more star seeds on earth than we've had during other times on earth where you know that sort of thing wasn't quite as accepted okay so i'm somebody that's had incarnations on lemuria so um i resonate i think as a soul more with lemuria than i do atlantis but i also understand atlantis really well with lemuria this was the kind of what i call the dream time realm okay so this is when souls were learning how to connect with their higher dimensional selves through dream time and through ritualistic practices okay so so lemurians i like to say lemurians tended to be high spirit spiritually oriented low technology so they were trying to do this without technology or without you know extensive technology all right, so if you were to go back in time and be in Lemuria, you would think, wow, this is a very primitive, you know, society, <laughs> you know, they, you know, they're just in their little canoes and, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, fishing and, you know, utilizing, you know, very, you know, very primitive type tools. But these people were very advanced spiritually. They were able to utilize the power of their minds to create their reality okay so this is what lemuria had to, had to um i think to teach us was that we don't need the technology i mean it's nice to have it but we can do everything with just with the power of thought and the power of intention can you place where lemuria was on the planet um if you look at the pacific ocean i would say it was a continent that was probably located between where Hawaii is today and probably somewhere between Hawaii probably around the area where Fiji is okay so so if you look on a map you know there are some maps out there that sh that kind of conceptualize where they think Lemuria might have been located it's actually located 
probably right in the center of of the um, Pacific Ocean, but probably more closer to um, to Southeast Asia. Okay, so or Astra Australia. It's thought that the remnants of Lemuria still exist today. That would be the Fiji Islands, Hawaiian Islands, and maybe even um, Australia. Lemuria was also known as Mu. And there seems to be, um, I think Mu was a tonality um, that was supposed to represent um, a certain tone it's a, because uh, like I said before, Lemuria is more spiritually oriented. So Mu was a galactic tone that was supposed to set a certain frequency. The tone of Mu was meant to be, I think, um, a certain frequency that they were trying to attain with Lemuria, you know, so. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. So yeah, it is located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. When Lemuria got destroyed, um, quite a bit of that continent got destroyed, but there were there are still to this day remnants of Lemuria. And I've I've lived in Hawaii for four years, so and I I was ecstatic. I I thought I'd gone to home, you know. So yeah. um, I always talk about Hawaii and my connections with Hawaii. But when you go to Hawaii, you still feel the high vibrations of Lemuria. Probably the same in certain locations in Australia and New Zealand. And can you also see what extraterrestrial beings were like um, interacting with us at that time? Like any specific races or? Lemuria had more influences from Arcturian and from uh, Andromedan groups. Wow. Okay. You did have some Syrians that also visited Lemuria because, you know, Syrians in general tend to be more spiritually oriented, okay, because these were civilizations that were more, more focused on high level spirituality. So even to this day, when I do uh, Akashic readings for folks that are more directed towards the Pacific area of our world, um, they tend to have connections with Arcturus or Andromeda. Okay. And I think that's why you see such an Andromeda influence on Southeast Asia, for instance, and more of an Arcturian influence in New Zealand and, and Australia. Oh, okay. And then was were we at a different dimension at that time because of the frequencies of, um, you know, all these beings here? Yes, I think at the time it was fifth dimensional, fifth and fourth, yeah. The humans that were incarnating on in Lemuria and Atlantis were higher level humans, you know, so they had, you know, more, so it was considered to be more of a unity consciousness, you know, society during that time. Well, are there physical remnants that we can identify that connect to that time? Yeah, Easter Island, I think, was also a part of Lemuria. And that's why my understanding with those heads that are on Easter Islands is they were created by, you know, the Easter Island inhabitants to be, I think, a tribute to the Arcturians that were visiting them. Hmm. So, so yes, there is, uh, there is a connection. And I think, I mean, as large as those heads were, I don't think they utilized manpower to yeah. put those those heads, I mean, because when you look, when you dig underneath the heads, there's whole bodies you know, right. underneath right. underneath the heads. So, so obviously these people didn't have the technology, you know, to put that together. I think they were utilizing, te you know, maybe some sound frequency techniques that they were learning from the extraterrestrials. And how were we uh, interacting with these beings? Because it was fifth dimensional during that right. time, they were able to come down and physically interact with these people. Today, you know, we get downloads or we, or we get, you know, messages from our guides. It wasn't like that. They were actually interacting physically with these beings right. and they knew who they were. It's interesting because I just thought of something. Um, in Hawaii, they call Arcturus Hakulia, which means the star of joy. So this shows, you know, the, the importance of the Arcturians and the star of Arcturus, you know, to these cultures, you know, that they consider them. And uh, the Polynesians always use Arcturus as a navigation star. So how did they learn this? They must have learned it from these beings that were, you know, visiting them during this time. Yeah. 
more the cultures that I think influ were influenced by Lemuria was, you know, some of the Southeast Asian cultures. I think, you know, more of your Egyptian and your Sumerian and your Babylonian cultures, these were cultures that were more directly influenced by Atlantis. Okay. okay. So I've seen these videos where there used to be, you know, like examples of huge trees, you know, that were like mm. just miles width. You know, like, mm -hmm. was that something that existed at that time? I think that was probably there around that time. Um, and I think those large trees existed probably in many parts of, of the world during that time. I think that was just representative of the energies and the, maybe the environment being different during that time that would support that kind of large growth. You know, nowadays, I don't think we have the... I think the environmental integrity to be able to support such large trees. We had more interaction with aquatic beings. We had more interaction with animals. Um, we were able to telepathically communicate with them during those times. I'm sure we lived much longer at that time. So we had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was not uncommon for humans to live, you know, 500 years, you know, 600 years. I would say as close to heaven on earth as you could probably find. Um, and they didn't call it Avalon because that wasn't, it wasn't a Lyran Pleiadian society. It was more Arcturian Syrian, but I think it did have Avalon like, um, aspects to the society. It's unity consciousness. Right.